Right, there you go, mate. Window fitted. You've got a double glazed, reinforced, bulletproof, guap guap, semi automated, gluten free V12 1600cc. It's glass, bro. I get it. It's, it's fine. But thank you, man. Honestly, I can't wait to just chill and watch the TV. Vamos. Para usted, pipa. Uy, se rompió el vidrio. Pegadito a nosotros, eh. Sí, sí. Yo ya me preparaba para Por el cabezazo. Por esa zafamos. Oh, mad. Oh, so you wanted it to be ballproof as well. Are you, are you mental? I knew living next to the commentary box was going to be a bad idea. Yeah, mate, you're right. Well, anyway, that'll be £1,673.50. <laughs> Guys, it is your boy Niran here, and you are watching FTW. It is, of course, the series where I bring to the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the last seven days. Before we get into the news, though, channel news, you can now become a member. It'll be down below, just underneath this video. It's a way to support the channel, and you'll get some cool perks, like being able to see videos, like, a day or two earlier than everybody else. No pressure, but if you want to, very much appreciated. What's been kicking off in the world this week? Well, Anthony Joshua took a break from his boxing career to put in his best Mickey Van Der Veen impression. He has won as many bouts as as me this week. Oh, fucking hell. My knee is gone already. The bell has it even. Caleb Anthony had said his opponent, Daniel Dubois, was shit just moments before the knockout. Just like a true Geordie DM, though, that shit would expose him. Now he's just months away from Danny Aaron's dodging him on the next Misfits card. In the blue corner. This week also saw 14 men in a line. No, not in a Nottingham student accommodation room. Countless guys lined up. It's us. A null. <laughs> A last minute equaliser from John Stones rescued a point from the 10 men gunners, but that doesn't tell the full story here. Erling Haaland had given City the lead before a Calafiori equaliser, leaving an explosive atmosphere inside the Etihad. And that was just Michael Oliver setting off a C4 in an act of terror. This man is banned from all of your local airports. He would call Kyle Walker over for a chat, only to let an Arsenal free kick go early, leaving him out of position and Martinelli free down the left. But Man City complaining about referees. Come on, guys. Let's not take the piss. Pep Guardiola was left furious, kicking his seat in anger after the goal, having to dish out a full apology to the chair after such a vicious attack. Look, all I'm saying is Bin Laden died in 2011. Michael Oliver was... Well, he was alive in 2011, so that's all I can. A header from Brazilian centre-back Gabriel would make it 2-1. And with Arsenal leading, tensions were at fever pitch. Bernardo Silva was telling Arsenal players how many Premier Leagues they'd won and how many rides he's allowed on at Thorpe Park. For three in an attitude. Meanwhile, at the end of the half, when Leandro Trossard fouled his opponent and kicked the ball away, he would cop himself a second yellow. They're just not learning after Declan Rice. Ultimately, it was the right decision, um, though there is absolutely no consistency when it comes to this law this season. Despite his dismissal and Trossard was trying to rustle Man City supporters and I really hope that wouldn't be a signal that would prove to be done too early during this match. Mikel Arteta then decided to engage in Boko Haram ball as Arsenal quickly settled into a 5-4-0 formation. Jose Mourinho walked so Mikel Arteta could walk even slower as this man rejuvenated the spirit of Britannia Stoke City to try and guide himself to glory. Am I doing a good job dad? No you are fucking shit mate. Jury and Timber and Kai Havertz both ended an 89 minute period with not a single completed pass, something that has never been done in history. Both happening in the same game. Kai Havertz completely a bystander during this one. David Raya would leave the stadium with knees strapping on, I can only assume from a carpet burn, having been laid on the floor so often time wasting. Meanwhile, youngster Miles Lewis Skelly would achieve something even more impressive, getting a yellow card before even making his debut. He was booked for telling David Raya to time waste even further and now becomes a one man pub quiz answer. A generational talent. As I said though, John Stones would score in the 98th minute here, sending Arsenal fans into added time related depression and seeing Erling Haaland throw the ball at the back of Gabriel's head. It could have been killed. It's a shithousery award for the Norwegian. This was absolute cinema, ladies and gentlemen. But honestly, I'm surprised that Gabriel wasn't given a red card for headbutting the ball. Meanwhile, back at home and troops found out he'd celebrated a little bit too early. Take your time with it. Yo, time with it. Come on! This is their last fucking chance. Come on! Keep him out the fucking... Oh, no. Oh, my days. Oh, my days. 
You're fucking kidding me. <laughs> Ricardo Calafiori was left depressed, realizing his aura couldn't keep the ball out of the net on its own. And after assaulting Gabriel Erling Haaland, then added Thomas Partey to his collection, bodying him just after kickoff, this man has turned into an actual villain. He even called for Mikel Arteta to be humble at full time. Arteta wasn't giving much energy back when it wasn't an innocent fourth official holding up a large electronic surface. Ben White was frozen to the core when someone above the height of five foot nine was getting left. Meanwhile, Declan Rice was left furious watching events unfold in front of him. Here's what the chat is. I've had a punk IPA in a media Mac is. I'm always down for the war, but I don't have a clue where Iraq is. But it wasn't all good news for Manchester City fans as Rodri picked up a serious injury to his ACL that will see him miss the rest of the season. And it's the Gunners with a late winner. Yeah, they'll be celebrating this draw again. Now, nah, realistically, like they always do. Now, genuinely, this is a massive blow for Manchester City. So important to their system is Rodri. And just generally speaking, he is one of the best players in the world. Let's not beat around the bush. They only looked beatable last season without him in the team. So obviously, wishing him a swift recovery as the rest of the footballing world is. Liam Gallagher though, he'll be performing at his season funeral. Hold on. Hold on. And after complaining about how many games footballers were having to endure per season just a week ago, is this a tactical ACL demolition? He'll have some stern words for FIFA this weekend, I'll tell you that for sure. Because Manchester City now, well, they've been left with less DMs than Diddy's events organiser. They've written a four-person shortlist as potential replacements, which include Edison. Edison! That seems a bit forward. I mean, to be fair, he plays as if he's a defensive midfielder half the time. By the time Rodri's back, these lot might have been relegated for the 115 charges. He'll be left bamboozled when he sees that his next game back is against S.E. Dons walking out onto the pitch and the goal frame has a chip shot behind it. It's game over when Pep Guardiola reads out the fixture list to him. Plymouth. What a night they've had in Plymouth. And then Stoke. And up to Middlesbrough. And over at Crystal Palace and I'm sure things are totally normal refereeing wise at Sellers Park. I don't know, lads. I feel like we should do something about this. Yeah, to be fair, it might be time to bring on Messi. Messi? Me We're in South London. Fucking hell, man. Are you not even watching the game? This challenge was somehow not fully punished from Lisandro versus the Eagles because the referee was distracted as the Argentine jumped off the white cliffs of Dover into Kamada's shins. It's actually crazy that Lisandro can jump three feet into the air and still only be five foot high, showing all manner of aggression for no reason whatsoever. This man could be of use in totally different walks of life. Get him inducted into the WWE immediately. Skydiving? Yeah, he's got that one on lock, mate. I just know he was a child that rocked on his chair as a kid and fell over and now none of us can. This act of pan-Asian warfare, though, was the only action as the match ended nil-nil. There were goals at the London City Stadium, though. All for Chelsea, as the Blues continued their good start with a win over West Ham. Do you need some actual results? It's time to call David Moyes. Moisey! Moisey? Okay, I don't think we're that close. Nicholas Jackson has been a totally different man, by the way, since John Obi Mikel called him clapped. He has finally got that motivation. I need that motivation tonight. Scoring a brace here. Fuck it. They might be the Jackson <laughs> 6 now. A Senegalese starlet carved from the earth of Africa, daring to moonwalk on a new world. Fucking hell, man. Does he ever stop talking? Chelsea's toast in Adara Bioyo's uh, tweet will have rubbed even more salt into the wounds for West Ham fans on popping bubbles. They'll have already been frustrated after VAR chose to ignore Crescencio Somerville getting dragged down in the box. The ref's distracted again. Meanwhile for Eric Ten Hag, and he's going to be left devastated seeing Jadon Sancho actually get goal contributions. Liverpool were victorious over Bournemouth with three quick fire goals biting the cherries. With a little bit of help from Kepa Aretha Balaga, whose error opened the scoring for the Reds. These lot might be the first club to get relegated purely because of a goalkeeper. The haters said that he couldn't do it, and they were right. They, he, he can't do it. Meanwhile, Darwin Nunez once again proved he can only score screamers with a curled effort in off the post for the third. I'm starting to wonder what this man's origin story even is. Man City defeated Watford in the Carabao Cup, though needed favours from the referee to beat Zone 11 on the tube line, as somehow a goal was disallowed for purely a bit of strength, as Watford striker shrugged the defender off the ball. If it was Erling Haaland, it gets given. But we all know that Man City have alternate means for getting results that they need. Yeah, if, listen, if I'm a Watford coach, I'm tackling the lino just by association for this one. Meanwhile, Jeremy Doku got himself on the score sheet, which of course leads us to check the defender he was up against and realise it was a 47-year-old Angelo Ogbonna. At Tottenham, and they might have been doing a bit of paying to referees too, as Vicario somehow got away with this handball outside the area versus Brentford. Bro, you could get done for travelling here. He's grabbed it. Yeah, mate, I know. That's what I'm saying. We should tell him to... Yo, 
you're not even playing a football game. On the theme of Spurs, Richarlison received his ultimate team card for the season and he is not happy with it at all. Hey FIFA, this is fucking shit card, man. Huh? Fucking shit. Here's a tip for you, Richie. Be better. Meanwhile, Levi Colwill genuinely has been done dirty, only getting a 77 rated card here as well. Over at Everton, and they're getting emotional after their latest goal scorer. And I will love Meanwhile, at Ipswich versus Southampton, and this referee saying hello to the football before he takes it out onto the pitch. To be fair, it needs some loving because it's getting used in Ipswich versus Southampton. That's about as bad as it gets. Over in France now, and Marseille are looking into the transfer market again, and that means they're looking onto the city's criminal record list, as they are apparently wanting to bring in former Man City fullback Benjamin Mendy. Thomas Barty's already getting himself prepared for his call up to move over to France. If we're being honest, right, Roberto De Zerbi needs a Le F. FBI investigation at this point. Check his hard drive. We might have to get these lot off FIFA. Like, just delete them off there. There's no saving them. Because Prison FC is fully activated at this stage. And it's actually disrespectful. The team they're going to have in career mode next season is going to be an absolute joke. And I don't mean a good one. And so for Hell FC, the worst people in history. It's Idi Amin. Right back is Joseph Stalin. It's Saddam Hussein. It's actually crazy. Like, a lot of these players, right, just objectively just shouldn't be getting a second chance in the game. Let alone our club that offers so much as Marseille. And definitely not in the same team, for fuck's sake. Who's next? I can't wait for Quincy Promise to get into an altercation as he gets a taxi to the training ground. I know what it is. The owner's trying to save money, realising he doesn't have to pay players when they get arrested. Securing the coin. Coin, 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 coin. Only certain men know what I'm talking about when it comes to securing a coin. And on the team of Marseille, Neil Mope was taken to Insta for his usual shithousery, putting Leon's badge on a bottle after they scored a 95th minute winner to beat rivals Leon. Elsewhere in League R, and things were getting spicy at Nice. As a game that quite literally becomes nice ass on the scoreboard, it was Nice dishing out a spanking 6 0 up at half time in an 8 0 win. Three substitutes came on, by the way, to try and turn the tide, and they immediately conceded another two. If I'm the manager, I'm I'm subbing myself out of the job. Big Arms Twitter saw the funny side of this one, protecting a younger audience from seeing what was on display. Meanwhile, Jack Greenish was quite literally licking his lip tuning in for this game. The promise of Batty didn't keep some Etienne fans in their seats though, as they departed at half time, never to return. Monaco aren't too pleased with Barcelona on Twitter this week, after a fan page claimed that they'd gone unbeaten under Hansi Flick. That's obviously not the case, because Monaco beat Barca last week in the Champions League 2-1. Meanwhile, the story of Andy Carroll at Bordeaux has got even better. On his debut, he scored a brace to help his new side to a sensational result and try and guide them back to the summit of French football. He really is doing it for the love of the game and we love to see it. Over in Spain though and things aren't quite as rosy for Barcelona as Marc-Andre Testegen suffered a rupture of his padella tendon in his knee which will see him out for the entire season, maybe even more. It's a catastrophic injury and I do feel awful for him. It's such a crazily long rehabilitation period for him and genuinely, genuinely we hope to see him back on the pitch soon. Some Barca fans were getting to a point where they didn't want to see him on the pitch at all. And I may be wondering how he's managed to injure himself at all, given he doesn't actually die for anything. But I think they'll realise that they miss him a lot more than they thought they would, because he's significantly better than Iñaki Pena. He is the problem. The one-legged Stegen might be better than him. The rest of the players will be staring at their new goalkeeper when he concedes a seventh to Villarreal. And to avoid that possibility, Barca are looking to bring Wojciech Szczesny out of retirement to replace the Stegen. They'll be having to cobble the funds together to get that printed on the back of his shirt. How much is this? 140. Sir. I've got 50p. Fuck you, bastard. Meanwhile, for poor Inyaki, he'll be concerned when he logs onto LinkedIn and <laughs> sees his job getting listed. <laughs> But a good start to the La Liga season did at least continue with yet another victory on the weekend. Rafinha is looking like Ronaldinho these days. It's actually impressive. He's just happy to be there, but bless him. Even more importantly, he's captaining the side at the moment. I can guarantee he slept with that armband on before the match. Hansi Flick was left fuming with one of the La Masia graduates as a youngster used his chair in the dugout as a step using a mark on it. Yet he's getting sent straight back to the sweatshop. Meanwhile, if we're talking about La Masia graduates, we can't brush past Lamine Yamal, who's been doing his wholesome bit this week, recording a message for a family member of a taxi driver while sat in the back of the cab. Real Madrid brushed aside Espanyol meanwhile in La Liga but it didn't stop tensions from flaring as Jude Bellingham called the referee a piece of shit. Everyone's getting over the top about this one. It's simply an inside joke with. Meanwhile Espanyol's goalkeeper was attempting to put off Kylian Mbappe as he stepped up to take a penalty only for Kylian to admit that he had absolutely no idea what the goalie was saying because his Spanish isn't that fluent yet. His record after this goal was, was pretty poor. Three penalties. The guy's a merchant. But he did at least grab a better 
goal in their game against Alaves. A win that saw Real surpass a year unbeaten in the league. Although they did come close to bottling it as Alaves scored too late on. Carlo Ancelotti was probably sweating. Meanwhile, Vinny was laughing at the six minutes of injury time that were given. Over at Atletico Madrid and Conor Gallagher was pictured. Knowing him, he'll have been left very confused. Wait, there's two blacks. Why is everyone black? Oh! oh, my God. oh. oh. And at Valencia, they had a wet floor sign put up in their club shop, warning members that if they slip over, it's probably going to end up being a penalty to Real Madrid. Pretty accurate given the decisions they get usually. Now, over in Italy, and we saw the Milan derby between AC and Inter, and Matteo Gabbia managed to score a last-minute winner to help AC Milan to victory. He's been at the club since he was 12 years old, and he's always supported them, so a truly wholesome moment for him. Sammy Abraham took to Instagram to confirm that Milan is in fact red and black, and his pressing during the game reflects the tears of Inter fans shed after the defeat. The last time these lot played each other, Marcus Turan picked up an AC Milan corner flag and draped his Inter shirt over the top of it, and AC Milan players would return the favour upon this victory. Napoli faced off against Juventus in the Battle of Mid, as Luka Vlahovic and Romelu Lukaku were both shocking. Half and half, half sit and half sit, wake the fuck up. Romelu's first touch is already starting to appear Lukaku. back in Italy, I'm not gonna lie. These lot went Timberland for Timberland. I've realised that Vlahovic is just basically Lukaku, but he grew up fighting like bears from the Balkans. Meanwhile, Cagliari were once again defeated against Empoli, and once again, their mascot was rinsed for it. I feel like they're starting to project their anger in the wrong direction. What has this poor Flamingo done? I'm like, what do you say fuck me for? At Como, and there's the sad news that Rafael Varane has taken the decision to retire from football at the age of 31 due to injury. Como will be fuming. The guy's literally just arrived. That's genuinely sad though after such a great career. Retiring that early feels criminal, but ultimately as a striker running behind, he just wasn't quite the same centre-back. In Germany, and Harry Kane was celebrating Oktoberfest with the Bayern Munich squad. It's incredible given it's not even October yet. He'll be absolutely finished trying to get out of a bar at 5.30am after all the drinking they do over there. Slurring his speech upon exit talking to friends, but that was him before he started drinking, so to be honest, the rest of the league might be drunk instead, as Bayern are continuing to steamroll their opposition. They slapped up Werder Bremen, and Vincent Kompany now has 29 goals in six games. That big head of his has got goal-scoring tactics in it. They were at a point where they'd scored 14 goals in 156 minutes. That's insane. New signing Michael Elise has been balling out there. He's literally on fire. Though Thomas Muller was finding things a little bit more difficult in Bayern training. <laughs> Best content of the month. Bayer Leverkusen are back to their old tactics. They beat Wolfsburg 4-3 with a last minute winner. Well, you just knew that was gonna happen. How do they keep doing this? How do they keep providing the most entertaining games you've ever seen in your life and then come out the other end victorious? Xabi Alonso had a message for the rest of the league after rescuing themselves from the pit of hell for a 17th time in a row. And as you can see, I am not dead! Meanwhile, it's been a bad week for Borussia Dortmund fans as they shipped five to Stuttgart. If I'm a Dortmund fan, I'm spending my entire day watching compilations of the good old days for the club. Meanwhile, manager Nuri Shahin was injury prone as a player. He's got to go to the medical centre now after this defeat. And down in the Bundesliga, via Darmstadt came back from 3-0 down to win 5-3 against Schalke. Change the name of the club immediately. Now that it's time for your goals of the week, we've got more screamers for you. First of all, we head over to Tamworth where a man called Tommy Tonks has tonked it into the back of the net. Whoever's named this man, give them a Nobel Peace Prize. In South Africa, and Andile Jali is about to play it against his former club. The ball's about to come to him on the edge of the area, and this angle captures the technique that he slaps it into the back of the net with. And finally, we are heading over to Bahrain of all places. We've got a player picking up the ball on the halfway line and drilling it over the head of the goalkeeper from distance. Absolutely ridiculous power and precision on this one. Hello all, and welcome to the beautiful game. The segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. And that concludes the beautiful game. Over in Saudi Arabia and Cristiano Ronaldo scored this week in a victory for Al Nazar. His son had scored in their youth ranks and he'd scored a brace so he pointed to him in the crowd to indicate that he'd completed their hat trick amongst the, the family tree. Using your own DNA to complete a hat trick and steal it from him is, is ridiculous business. That might be Ronaldo Jr but there's plenty more where that came from as there's the revelation that there's 35 youth players with the name Cristiano Ronaldo in Portugal's youth setup right now including one at Sport 
sporting. DNA test, probably not required on that one, though. Back in Saudi Arabia, though, and Musa Diaby, freshly joined from Aston Villa, came up against Sergei Milinkovic Savic of Al Hilal, and he left firmly defeated. All 24 fans in attendance are going to have been gassed seeing that one in the stadium, by the way. Meanwhile, Chris Smalling put out a peculiar tweet this week talking about Saudi Arabian infrastructure. Let's be honest, he's been paid to plug propaganda. This brother doesn't even know what cognitive means. Galatasaray were victorious in a derby against Jose Mourinho's Fenerbahce. Mauro Icardi would have been happy with this revelation after a Fenerbahce fan wore a shirt saying Wandanara69 on the back of it. He'll have been jumping into the crowd upon seeing it from distance. Meanwhile, Galatasaray celebrated by posting the winner one as a caption with Jose Mourinho in the foreground. Yeah, it's a shithousery award for the Istanbul side. Last week, I told you about Anthony Martial and his ventures over to Greece and AEK Athens. He's been taken rally driving as part of the promotion for the signing or social media post they're doing. Everyone talks about NHS Anthony Martial for his best form. He's going to need the NHS at this rate. Meanwhile, in Brazil, someone paid for a Sao Paulo themed blimp to, I don't know, fly in the sky and support the side. It crashed uh, into like the favelas. I think everyone was, I hope there was no issues. It didn't like blow up or anything. It just kind of sadly flopped to the floor. But it's just typical Brazilian stuff really, isn't it? Up in Scotland and Cove Rangers faced off against Inverness. There was a slight issue when the referee went down injured during the game, meaning they had to put out an announcement looking for somebody trained in the crowd. You know what's mad? Anthony Taylor could have been in attendance and he wouldn't have been qualified. Meanwhile, one photographer posted a selection of photos they'd taken from Welsh football this week, including this man riding around on a motorbike on the pitch with a cigarette in his mouth. Maybe I need to tune into Welsh football a little bit more. Maybe I need to tune into Norwegian football a little bit more. Because at Bryn, they've got an offer that we cannot refuse. A VIP ticket, which is quite literally a sofa being held up by a tractor so you get a better view. And in North Korea, talk about a surprising result. Their women's side won the under-20s World Cup this week. Obviously, North Korea not exactly known for its footballing ability, and they probably didn't even know that there were other nations competing. They got told that it was just everyone was going to be from North Korea. Now that it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for, because over in Romania, we've got the story of a Romanian third-tier side that were given a 3-0 loss this week. Now, they actually, I think, won the game. I'm not entirely sure, but they were handed a 3-0 defeat by forfeit because Vointa Limpezis, the, the team in question, said that they'd played an under-19 player, which you have to do from Romania as part of, like, registration rules, only it was proved that he's actually a South American, and I don't think he's even under-19 at all. They should have known, really, when he handed over his ID at the end of the game. Brett Clement. Yep. You know this is an Australian driving licence? Yep. So you're Australian? That's right, mate. Closer to home, and there's been disastrous stuff over at Wimbledon as their pitch was hit by sudden floods, which basically saw sinkholes appear on the ground. Now, other teams have actually donated to help them kind of redo the turf, but there's an expectation they may not be able to play home games for a little while. So hopefully they get that sorted pretty quickly. At Blackburn, there were crazy scenes as Owen Beck was bitten by a Preston defender, and the referee and linesman somehow didn't see it, even though the lino was right there. A little bit forward to be offering a love bite before they actually get to the showers after the game, the storyline of Richard Kone is an incredible one. An Ivorian who arrived in England a few years ago, played in the homeless World Cup in the country, was rejected by football league teams, was playing in the ninth tier of English football last season, then signed for Wickham Wanderers and scored against Aston Villa in the Carabao Cup. Absolutely smashing it and a serious inspiration. There was a horror own goal from Huddersfield against Northampton Town this week, which they will not want to look back on at all. Meanwhile, a 99-year-old fan called Derek provided some wholesome content at Bolton Wanderers. He was gifted a shirt after all his years supporting the club. We love to see it, Derek. Come on, 100 soon come. In Zimbabwe now, there were crazy scenes at Highlanders. As they had a penalty given against them, they felt was outside of the area. And upon the replays, it does look as if it was outside the area. They decided to walk off the pitch as a team in protest. And honestly, if they were doing that in the Premier League, we wouldn't have any teams left. There was chaos in Vienna between FK Austria and Rapid as fans ran onto the pitch to scrap each other and throw fireworks and clash with each other. Crazy scenes. I often think of Austria as like quite a calm nation. I don't think I've ever even seen fans violence there. Meanwhile, well, there are all sorts of violent scenes in Algeria as MC Algiers faced off against Monastir in the CAF Champions League. First of all, as they were going through on goal to try and win themselves a penalty, a ball was thrown onto the pitch by the opposition to try and get the play stopped. That then led to people scrapping at full time and getting aggressive with each other, and those scraps then continued into the tunnel. So pretty violent and dark scenes there. And staying in the continent, we've got the most composed finish you might ever see coming from FC Tunis. But what a story that has come from the Czech Republic. It's technically a week old because Sparta Prague won 3 0 last week against Red Bull Salzburg. But I wanted to shout out their player, Philip Panat, who was sidelined for more than 800 days due to a knee injury between 2018 and 2022. He returned for this game and won Man of the Match. So a crazy comeback and return for Philip.
Now that it's time for still nil nil, and you guys know the score by now. This is a segment of the show where I bring to the best of Sunday league and amateur football. And this week we're heading over to Finland, where we're celebrating the retirement of a stalwart, Colorin Contio's 50-year-old midfielder Marcus Makitalo, has decided to retire from the beautiful game. And to celebrate, he is quite literally hanging up his boots. He's he's driving a nail through them and hanging them up in the dressing room. A nice gesture, and actually like a really cool idea for players that retire moving forward. On to the weird stuff though now. First of all, if you were a fan of the box, look away now because Brunei Daruzala managed to lose 15-0 this week. That's actually borderline impressive to be honest with you. And finally, back in Tunisia, we're heading back to Tunis now, where we find a story of Youssef Belaili, a man who according to the news suffered, uh, was a victim of a home robbery where burglars attempted to break into his house and stole a significant amount of stuff. Turns out though, this was created by himself and his entourage that he could miss a game this week. The actual reason for missing the game was because he wanted to attend a friend's wedding and he was pictured there. Not a very good cover up really, brother. Come on, we've got to go more stealthy. That though is going to wrap up football this week and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then feel free to slap a like on the video and of course subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. You can also support the channel using the members section down below. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye.